Mona Lisa and Starry Night don't just share the title of billion-dollar masterpieces, they also share the same material foundation, oil paint. So how is this material made that it can preserve a painting for centuries? Behind every single tube of paint lies an entire world of chemistry, minerals, extreme heat, precision milling, and months of laboratory testing. Every pigment particle is controlled. Every drop of oil is carefully measured because even the smallest deviation can change the color, durability, and value of an entire artwork. In this video, we're not going to talk about painting. We're going back to the very beginning of masterpieces to discover how oil paint is made. Oil paint is considered the most long-lasting painting medium in the history of Western art because works created hundreds of years ago still retain in their color, depth, and emotional power almost intact to this day. So is there any oil painting that has ever truly impressed you? So powerful that you still remember it after seeing it just once? Inside a high-end tube of oil paint, up to 75% can be pure pigment, far more than acrylic or most other types of paint. This extremely high pigment concentration is what creates the deep colors, strong coverage, and vivid intensity that define oil paintings. And because of this, some colors were once worth more than gold. Ultramarine, made from lapis lazuli mined in Afghanistan, was one of the most precious pigments in history. And with Tyrian purple, producing just a few grams of pigment required around 12,000 sea snails. All of this shows that oil paint is not just an artistic material. It is a fusion of minerals, chemistry, human effort, and historical value. The pigment preparation stage is the foundation of the entire quality of oil paint. Everything begins with selecting the source of the pigment, which can come from natural minerals, metal compounds, or synthetic pigments produced in laboratories. This raw material cannot be used immediately because the particle sizes are still large, uneven, and contain impurities. It must first be pre-ground to break down the initial structure, then sieve to remove coarse particles and dust that do not meet the standards. Next, the pigment is tested for purity and light fastness because a good pigment not only needs to look beautiful, but must also maintain stable color for hundreds of years. Finally, the pigment is completely dried to remove all moisture, making it ready to combine with linseed oil without causing clumping or unwanted chemical reactions. After the pigment has been prepared, the next step is processing the oil, which acts as the binding agent in oil paint. Besides linseed oil, other drying oils such as poppy seed oil, walnut oil, or safflower oil can also be used, but linseed oil remains the most common choice because of its stable drying properties and high durability. The process begins by pressing flax seeds to obtain crude oil. This oil is then filtered multiple times to remove mechanical residues and impurities. After that, it is refined to reduce the amount of free fatty acids, which helps limit yellowing over time and improves the overall stability of the paint. In some processes, the oil is gently heated to further enhance its drying ability and consistency. Once completed, the linseed oil reaches a state of purity and stability that makes it ready to combine with the pigment in the next stages of oil paint production. When the pigment and the oil have been prepared separately, the mixing stage begins with precisely weighing each component according to the formula of each specific color. First, linseed oil and liquid additives are poured into the mixing tank to create a stable wet base. Then the pigment is slowly added into the oil. This method allows the powder to absorb the oil more evenly, reduces clumping, and minimizes the amount of pigment dust released into the air. This step is not meant to produce finished paint, but to form a thick paste where each pigment particle has begun to be coated with oil. The important point is that each type of pigment requires a different amount of oil. Pigments with very fine particles in large surface areas absorb more oil, while heavier pigments with coarser particles need less. That is why there is no universal mixing formula for all colors. This is also why, even though they are all oil paints, each color has a different thickness, texture, and working feel. During mixing, 
Low-speed mixers are used, typically running at only 20 to 60 revolutions per minute to avoid pulling too much air into the mixture. Each batch usually takes 15 to 40 minutes just to create this rough paste. If the initial color is not quite right, small amounts of pigment can be added and carefully reweighed. However, any adjustments at this stage are only preliminary because the final color can only be confirmed after the mixture has gone through the grinding process. In this mixing stage, workers must wear full protective equipment. Pigment in powder form is extremely fine, easily becomes airborne, and can be harmful if inhaled. For that reason, they wear dust filtering masks or light respirators. Their hands are protected with rubber or nitrile gloves to avoid direct contact with linseed oil and pigments, since some substances can cause skin irritation after prolonged exposure. After the rough paste has been formed, it is sent to the grinding stage, which is the step that directly determines the fineness, color depth, and final quality of the oil paint. In professional production, a three-roll mill is used, where three rollers made of metal, ceramic, or granite rotate in opposite directions, with gaps adjusted to extremely precise tolerances, sometimes only a few microns wide. When the paste is pulled into the pressure zone, the strong mechanical force completely breaks down any remaining pigment clusters, forcing each color particle to disperse deeply and evenly into the linseed oil. On the surface of the rollers, the paint is spread into a very thin, smooth layer with a slight sheen, showing that its internal structure has shifted from a rough mixture to a more continuous and stable state. At this point, the color begins to mature, becoming richer, clearer, and visually deeper than the original paste. The distance between the rollers is not fixed, but adjusted differently for each type of pigment because every color has its own grinding formula. Hard pigments require stronger pressure while softer or heat-sensitive pigments need wider gaps to prevent damage to their color structure. This is why the grinding process always requires close supervision by skilled technicians and cannot be fully automated. Typically, a batch of paint must pass through the mill two to five times to achieve perfect dispersion. After each pass, workers use metal scrapers to collect the paint from the roller surfaces into a container, while visually checking its gloss, smoothness, and the way it pulls into strings to quickly assess quality. If the paint is still gritty, cloudy, or uneven in color, it is sent through the rollers again until it meets the required standard. After the paint has been finely ground and stabilized in the holding container, each batch enters the quality control stage. This is the step that determines whether the batch is ready to be filled into tubes or must be sent back for further adjustment. The first check is the fineness of the pigment particles. Technicians use a specialized fineness gauge or a glass test plate to spread a thin layer of paint and examine whether any coarse particles remain. Even a very small amount of particles larger than the standard can require the entire batch to be sent back through the grinding process for another pass. Next, viscosity is tested, which refers to how thick or fluid the paint is. Viscosity directly affects how the paint flows on the brush how it covers the surface in the overall painting experience. If the paint is too thick, a very small amount of oil is added. If it is too thin, the formula is adjusted in the opposite direction. Color is also compared to the company's reference standard under controlled lighting conditions to ensure that every tube reaching an artist has the same color, regardless of when it was produced. In addition, the paint is brushed onto a test surface to evaluate its coverage, gloss, and spreading behavior. Only when a batch passes all of these tests is it considered to meet the standard and allowed to move on to the filling and tube sealing stages. At the same time that the paint quality is being finalized, the aluminum tubes are prepared on a separate production line. Aluminum is chosen because it is lightweight, durable, corrosion resistant, and most importantly, extremely effective at preventing air from entering, which is critical for oil paint since it dries through oxidation. Thin aluminum sheets are formed into tubes, then the bottom and the threaded neck are shaped so that an airtight cap can be securely attached. Inside each tube, a thin protective coating is usually applied to prevent chemical reactions between the aluminum and the linseed oil during long-term storage. 
After forming, the aluminum tubes are washed, dried, and tested for air tightness. Even a tiny defect at the bottom seam or the threaded neck can allow air to leak in, causing the paint to dry before it ever reaches the user. Once they pass inspection, the empty tubes are sent to the filling area, ready to receive the finished paint. When the aluminum tubes are ready and the oil paint has passed all quality control tests, the process moves on to the filling stage. This is the step where the paint is transferred from a semi-finished product stored in containers into its final commercial form, aluminum tubes. Because oil paint is highly viscous and very sensitive to air exposure, the filling process must be carried out slowly, smoothly, and under strict control. The aluminum tubes are secured on a conveyor or in holders on the filling machine. The paint is pumped in using a piston system or a low-pressure pump, allowing it to flow steadily into the tube without creating turbulence or drawing in excessive air. Each tube is precisely measured by weight to ensure that every product reaching the user has a consistent volume and meets the manufacturer's stated specifications. Due to the high viscosity of oil paint, the pumping speed cannot be too fast. If the filling is done too aggressively, air can become trapped inside the tube, leading to air pockets when the paint is used or reducing its stability during storage. In semi-automatic production lines, the filling capacity typically ranges from 20 to 60 tubes per minute. In fully automated systems, this number can increase to 100 to 200 tubes per minute, depending on the tube size and the thickness of the paint. After being filled, the paint tubes are not yet considered finished. They are then transferred to the bottom sealing and crimping stage, where the air tightness of the product is finally secured for long-term storage. At this step, the bottom of the tube, which is still open, is fed into a specialized crimping machine. The machine folds the aluminum edge into a standardized shape, usually by making two or three overlapping folds, forming a strong and uniform seal. Before crimping, some production lines perform a light operation to push any remaining air inside the tube toward the opening, ensuring that the interior contains almost only paint. Once the bottom is sealed, the fold must be flat, even, and completely free of gaps. After this step, the tube reaches a fully airtight condition. At this point, the batch code or production date is typically printed directly onto the folded bottom, allowing for quality control and traceability. Finally, the cap is tightly screwed onto the neck of the tube, creating a finished product that is ready for packaging and distribution. Once the paint tubes have been crimped and completely sealed, they move on to the packaging stage. First, each tube is given a final visual inspection to detect mechanical defects such as uneven crimps, dented bodies, or any signs of paint leakage. Next, the tubes are placed into individual boxes or packing trays in batches. The packaging is printed with all essential information, including the color name, color code, series number, volume, manufacturer, and safety details. On automated production lines, machines can package from several dozen to several hundred tubes per minute, depending on the size of the product and the type of packaging used. Finally, the smaller boxes are packed into large cardboard cartons, labeled with batch information and prepared for shipment. From this point, the oil paint is ready to enter the distribution chain, reaching art supply stores and artists around the world. In addition to traditional oil paint in tubes, there is a special form known as oil sticks or oil bars. In essence, oil sticks are still oil paint. They differ only in form and in the proportion of their ingredients. Instead of being soft and paste-like so they can be squeezed out of a tube, the formula is adjusted to make the paint thicker and more solid, firm enough to be held directly like a drawing stick. To achieve this, besides pigment and linseed oil, a small amount of natural wax is added, usually beeswax or plant-based wax. This wax allows the paint to maintain a solid shape while remaining soft enough to glide smoothly across the canvas. The production process of oil sticks is basically the same as that of traditional oil paint. The difference appears in the formula adjustment stage after grinding, when wax is added and thoroughly mixed to create a semi-solid structure. The mixture is then poured into cylindrical molds, cooled and cut into individual sticks, which are finally wrapped in paper or plastic sleeves for protection. 
Oil sticks allow artists to draw and paint directly on the surface without using brushes, creating a working experience similar to pastels while fully preserving the key properties of oil paint, such as layering, blending, and long-lasting color durability. From what seems like a simple mixture of oil and pigment, oil paint goes through a manufacturing journey that demands near-absolute precision at every single stage. From selecting and preparing the pigments, refining linseed oil, mixing at low speeds, grinding through rollers spaced just a few micrometers apart, to quality, control, filling, crimping, and packaging, every step is governed by strict technical standards. If you found the journey of a single tube of oil paint fascinating, don't forget to like the video, leave a comment with your thoughts, and subscribe to the channel so you won't miss the next stories about the processes behind humanity's greatest masterpieces.